Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt the hands. And just like we did with the last video, there's going to be two parts. One, adjusting our base mesh, and then two, getting into the sculpting. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's select our hands, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then what we're going to do first is kind of shrink down our wrist a little bit. And then let's go ahead and hide the shirt and select the interface here and hit control numpad plus, which will then allow us to select all of those, bring back the shirt, and let's change our transform orientation from global to normal. So then when I hit G and then Z, I can just move that into the shirt and it'll look like it's just going into the shirt. Whereas if I were doing it globally, it wouldn't line up correctly. And then I'll just scale it out just a little bit so that way there is a wrist going in and it looks like the forearm is coming out and narrowing towards the wrist there. Now that detail may be covered up by the shirt cuff when we finally get there, but it's something that I want to put in place. And actually let's, we'll take it just a little bit further uh, and there we go. So now we can see where the wrist ends inside the shirt and I think that's going to look a little bit better. From here, let's uh, hit one and switch to vertex select and then we're going to adjust the resting position of our thumb because right now the hand is sticking way too far out for a resting position. So I just want to move this in a little bit. So let me turn on proportional editing with the O hotkey and then let me just move this thumb where it needs to go and I can scroll in or out to adjust the size of the radius of affected mesh and then I'm just going to rotate that a little bit and now we'll pull and position a little bit better. And that thumb is basically going to where the first knuckle will stop on our index finger. So that's pretty good for me. Now we do have uh, some curvature here on our fingers. I don't think it needs to curve that far in hindsight. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of pull these back a little bit, which then will lessen the rotation uh, or the appearance of rotation on our fingers. Okay, and that's pretty much all we have to do before getting into sculpting the hand. So let's go ahead and hide the pants and the shirt and then switch into sculpt mode to sculpt the hands. So to jump into sculpt mode, hit control tab and select sculpt mode here. And then let's go ahead, turn off mirroring because otherwise it'll try to mirror across our hand here and that's not what we want. And turn on dynamic topology, which is set to a brush detail with subdivide collapse. From there, let's go ahead and set our strength somewhere around a 0.2 and then grab our inflate brush. And this is the standard way that I start out my sculpts just to add in some more topology. So that way, you know, things don't get pretty crazy once I've started sculpting with some real brushes. So then we want to lightly go over the mesh that we have created. And so we notice like things are a little messed up here. That's okay. Because once we get in there and use the inflate brush and smooth it out, that topology kind of fixes itself. Now the good news about brush detail and why I use it with dynamic topology is that as you adjust the size of your brush, the size of the mesh being generated also changes. And so it makes it really easy to get in here with like the finger details that we want to add. Now, I would encourage you not to sculpt a hand or anything without a reference image attached to it. But you don't see one on my screen because I'm using my hand as the reference image. And you should probably use yours unless you have a specific style of hands in place. But if you're not trying to sculpt a realistic hand, you can basically get away with getting the pads of the hand done, which are the like the fatty bits right here and here and right up here, right underneath your knuckles, and then having fingers that vaguely look like fingers, and that'll be fine. And if you don't believe me, you can check out Wreck-It Ralph or any of the Pixar shorts, and you'll notice that basically all the pads are there, but the fingers can take whatever shape they want and it still looks very recognizable as a hand. So you don't have to get too realistic with this. You just have to make sure that the pads of the hand are in place and you'll probably be good after that. All right, so now that our hand has been uh, basically created and smoothed out with the inflate tool, let's go ahead and grab the clay strips brush and then just add in some of those pads that I was just talking about. So for the hand here, we have a big pad that kind of goes like this along the hand. So we'll just put that in. And then we have another pad over here on the outside so we can add in and kind of shape up the hand in this direction. I still have my strength at a pretty low value here. 
Uh, but let's take this out just a bit. There we go. We've gotten the outside of our hand. It looks pretty good. Then we can smooth the transition here. Let me beef up a little bit on the backs of the knuckles. We'll come back to this in just a second. But since I'm looking at it, I'm doing it now. All right, let's go back to the, the bottom of the hand. Smooth out this pad. And let's put in the pad for the knuckles. So then we can kind of come across here. And we can smooth that out a little bit. And then we have our areas creased out for us already, but let's go ahead and generate the connecting skin a little bit better. Just something like that, and then we can smooth it down. All right, and then I'll come in here with a crease brush and just kind of add in a light crease around here to show that the fingers are being generated from that point. And then you can kind of look at your finger and determine where those other creases should go. So I think there's gonna be a crease right about there and right about there on that finger. And then they get kind of smaller as time goes on. Now they don't have to be perfect. Remember the hands are probably gonna be uh, small in your case and most people aren't gonna pay close attention to them. So you don't have to really worry about getting them uh, too bad. But if you don't like the way that some things are formed, like right here, I don't think that's properly formed. We can grab the, uh, that is the grab tool. I wanted the elastic to form brush over here, which will then let you kind of reposition parts of your mesh a little bit better. Okay, and then come back with the clay strips brush and let's build up the pad of that thumb. That looks bad. I'm gonna re-push that in there. All right, and that's pretty much it. So at this point, we've gotten uh, a lot of our stuff in place. And just kind of build up pads and smooth them down as we go on. Okay, and for the last step on the thumb, let's actually use the grab tool and kind of push that thumb in a bit so that way we get a thumbnail or an area where a thumbnail could exist. All right, switching back to the crease brush and I'm just gonna crease in this section right here. And there we go. And then we can add in a slight crease along here and there. Now we have the pads of the hand and we just need to beef up the section a little bit better, follow those creases and smooth it all out. So let's uh, finish up on this thumb here. We're just gonna push these in just a little. And we'll pull out this section using the elastic to form brush and smooth that all down to give us the area that we should be looking at for our thumb. And then if you really wanna get in there, all you have to do is just grab the crease brush again and you kinda of crease out a thumbnail area. Something like that. But that's a little up, that's up a little too far, so let's Pull this down just like that. And there we go. Our thumb is good and the pads of our hand are good. So now let's work on the back of our hand. All right, so for the back of our hand, we wanna mark out where the tendons are and where the tendons aren't. So let's go ahead and grab the clay strips brush again and then let's mark out where our knuckles will actually be. So right about there, there, here somewhere for the pinky and for the index. And then we wanna draw out those tendons. Now this is basically going to go straight to the wrist from the middle finger, something like that. And then the rest of them are going to kind of converge. So they're not going in parallel. The tendons are all basically going to one particular place. So we'll do something like that and then hold control and click to carve out the mesh area uh, between the fingers and the tendons just because we wanna get a little bit of the uh, the 
deforming the way our skin would deform uh, in there. Not a whole lot. And then we can kind of just come in here and smooth it out. Just increase the strength of our smooth brush here and there we go. So now we can see a little bit of that detail, but it's not getting in there too crazy. Okay, just like that. And the back of our hand for this model is basically done. And now it's just time to finish up the fingers, which is just a continuation of how we did the thumb, where we put in those creases there, built up the pads of the area, and then generated a space for the thumbnail. So if you like this video, let me know in the comments below and smash that like button to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you wanna keep getting more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, enjoy the time lapse, and I will see you in the next video.